We live in a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. Innovarex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes! 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. All right. Honey. Did you remind him that the last time he served the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Jamano Money Transfer Bureau de Chance, your go-to option when it comes to money transfer. With Jamano, you can send money from anywhere in the world to your family and loved ones in the Gambia and be sure the funds will be delivered to them within the shortest time possible. For your convenience, funds sent through Jamano Money Transfer can be picked from all the banks and multiple other financial institutions, including Ajib Bank, Trust Bank, GT Bank, Mega Bank, Basic Bank, Reliance Financial Services, and Approved Services. Visit our head office at Bruce B. Opposite AfricMed, next to Trust Bank Limited, or email us at info at jamanomt.com. You can as well call us on 310-3050 or 310-3051, or yet still 733-0688. Our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Sunday. 
Yamano Money Transfer, your most trusted money transfer service where customer satisfaction is paramount. When you think of a simple, fast, and reliable money transfer, think Yamano Money Transfer. Under the sections 168, subsection 1 of the 1997 Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, appointed His Excellency Mr. Mohammed B. S. Jalo as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia. As required by law, Mr. Mohammed B. S. Jalo, the Vice President, is to take the prescribed oath, that is, the oath of allegiance, oath of due execution of office, and oath of secrecy. I, Ali Unjai, the Secretary of the Cabinet, have the honor to invite His Excellency Mohammed B. S. Jalo, Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, to come forward and take the oath and thereafter sign the oath book. I, Mohammed B. S. Jalo, having been appointed as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to law. So help me God. I, Mohammed B. S. Jalo, do swear that I will execute the functions of the Office of Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the Constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. I, Mohammed B. S. Jalo, having been appointed as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will not directly or indirectly reveal such matters as may be committed to my secrecy. So help me God. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Honorable Ministers here present, Imam Rati of Banjul, the Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, the Chief, the, the Chief of Staff of His Excellency, the President, Staff of the Office of the Vice President, and my, the family members and friends, um, I welcome you all. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you, Your Excellency, for the confidence uh, bestowed in me um, in this appointment. I know that I have worked with you uh, before as is your Secretary General, and I'm honored and humbled that you felt it worthy that what I did then satisfied you to enable you to appoint me once again to this high office. I, myself, and my family, we are very grateful um, for that confidence, um, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, permit me to also pay tribute to His Excellency, the late Vice President Badra Ali Ujuf. The late Vice President was my teacher and my mentor. And I think excuse me, I'm just trying to avoid being, being emotional. The late Vice President was a very committed individual. Like I said, he taught me in school and he was also our permanent secretary at the Ministry of Education at the time. And uh, his commitment to duty was on question. And I'm sure some colleagues here can attest to that. Um, he was somebody who was always going beyond what was required as a line of duty. We'll spend hours in the office 
weekends he will come back to the office to make sure that what should be done is done. So I really want to um, highlight that he had also sought us leadership. I remember two occasions, on one occasion when we were working on the, the restructuring of the Ministry of Education and uh, the challenges that he faced. In fact, I could remember one of the statements he made was that you cannot make omelette without breaking an egg. And just to show the challenge he faced, one of the subordinates said to him, the egg breakers will be broken. That showed the challenge. But he, and when I asked him later, he said, I said, why do you, you know, put up to this? He said, I know that one day I'm going to leave. But when I leave, I want to leave a legacy. That was our former vice president. There was also another occasion which Your Excellency I want to share, which actually demonstrated leadership. When we were supposed to go to Washington to negotiate for a grant for a project on behalf of the Ministry of Education, we had a delegation. And some people went to the Secretary General at the time and said to him, these people at education, their delegation is too big. It needs to be reduced. He said to them, he said to the Secretary General, this team, I am the least important in the team. If there is anybody who is going to drop, I am the one who is going to drop. And Your Excellency, that was what he did. He made sure that everybody left, but he dropped from the team. Again, that shows leadership. So Your Excellency, I join you in mourning him and the people of this country, the type of vice president that, that we had. And we owe a lot to him, myself, and some other people around in this, in this um, August gathering, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, you have challenged us. Say whatever we do, it has to be based on rule of law and due process. I know that many people keep talking about Singapore. Many people keep talking about Rwanda and even next door Cape Verde. But I want to share your excellency that all these countries that are being mentioned, what people don't share is their commitment and their discipline. When we talk about Singapore, the first thing that Lee Kuan Yew did was to make sure that she brought discipline into the society and focus on basic services, that is basic education and basic health services. So, Your Excellency, we want to assure you that we are going to do all we can to make sure that the promises that you made to the electorate are fulfilled by working closely with the other uh, cabinet colleagues. My predecessor, the former vice president, he talked about team, teamwork and team building. And I think he has already built a team. What is left for me is to continue with that team and make sure that it bears fruit. Your Excellency, I would want to make sure that this, your government, is based on evidence-based decision-making. We have a lot, I mean, I know that for some of us, we have been hearing it, or we have been leading for so many years without data. But I think, Your Excellency, you cannot take informed decisions without relevant data. We thank the General um, Bureau of Statistics they are producing a lot of statistics which many people are not using. It's my intention, Your Excellency, to make sure that I work with the relevant sectors so that they use all that data that is being um, produced over the years. We just don't produce data for the development partners. We produce data to make sure that we are making informed, informed decisions, Your Excellency. I know that when you build infrastructure, people will say, this is politicking. Now, your Excellency, your government has made a lot of efforts in terms of education. But we know that there are still a lot of children who are still out of school. The data from the Ministry of Basic Education shows it, data from statistics also shows it. In order to move forward, we have to make sure that no one is left behind. Everybody has to come to school. Now, to do that, 
means that we have to provide more resources as evidence has showed the last 10 percent to come to school is always the most expensive in terms of in terms of unit costs now I, I was sharing i hope your your the, the secretary of cabinet you know will allow me because when i talked to him he told me he's from samba taco and i said it's one of the one of the success stories because if somebody coming from that rural area has risen up to the level of secretary of cabinet it's a success for 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 for, for the government to make sure that we provide access to the remotest of, of communities. Those who know me know that I always like to talk about Nyankui. I'm not talking about Nyankui, I'm talking about Nyankui. Nyankui is so remote. Yes, Your Excellency, you have done the Lamin Kota Pasamas road, but Nyankui is 15 kilometers from that road, down into a hill. So they have access problems, they have water problems, they have electricity problems. Now, can you imagine if you bring all of those services to that, to that community, what impact it can, it can make? We know that electricity is one of the most transforming um, in terms of economic growth. We have seen it, those communities which did not have electricity before, when they have, how it has transformed, transformed their, their, their economy. And the, and the roads. Some of us who are in Banjul, we think that water is not a problem because when you open the tap, the water comes out. But somebody in Makamasire, whereby there are wells as, as deep as 50 meters, sometimes even more, they have to you know, use donkeys to draw the water. I think Your Excellency, the program that you have initiated through the DSPD um, is something that we loud and we want to make sure that we support so that the resources are there, so that everybody has access to water and proper, proper sanitation. Your Excellency, I would want to assure you that I would work together with the Ministers of Finance and Trade to make sure that the private sector is empowered because it is the private sector that creates jobs. The government provides the, re the relevant um, uh, environment for the private sector to, to create jobs. And I think we owe it to our people to make sure that that is, that is happening even though we know there are challenges, but we also want to streamline some of the, some of the processes. Your Excellency, you have also initiated some public sector reforms. I want to assure you that we will work with the Ministers of Justice and Minister of Public Service to facilitate those public sector reforms. We know that one of the challenges of public sector reform is the legal environment and regulations. Some sectors I know were created since the First Republic. They have the legal mandate, but regulations were not promulgated. We want to make sure that we are able to, to, to close all of, all of those gaps, Your Excellency, to facilitate the work. Your Excellency, you have also talked about effective civil service. I want to assure you that I will work with the Secretary General and the Minister of Public Service to make sure that we improve on the civil service so that it can go back to the glory days. When you appointed me as Secretary General, that was one of the challenges that you gave me. And I started on that uh, road, and I'm assuring you that I'll continue to work with the Minister of Public Service and the Secretary General uh, to make sure that we achieve the target that you have set, set for us. Your Excellency, finally, I would like to allow you me to thank um, the people. I would first of all, with your permission, like to thank the Imam Rati of Banjul, who has supported me <coughs> all throughout. And I think everybody associated, associates me with him. And I'm honored by his, his presence. Um, in fact, to a point where people think that I'm from Medina Serenmas. But I think it's an, it's an honor to be associated with such 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 a personality. Um, I want, also want to thank my family for all the support that they have given me um, throughout. It's not easy. Um, but Your Excellency, permit me, I want to make a special thanks to the chairman
the chairman of the Public Service Commission. Mr. Samate. When I, when I was offered scholarship in 1989, my father could not afford to provide a guarantee. I'm very sorry. My father, when I told him that we need to have a guarantee, he said, let's go. Went to the, public, the, the PMO, the establishment at the time. As we entered the office, Mr. Samate was coming out of his office. And my father said to him, my son is going for studies and we need a guarantor. There and then, he just signed the papers without even asking. So I'm forever grateful. I'm glad the Honorable Samate is here. I want you to extend my thanks and appreciation to him. My father is late now for so many years, but I will never forget what he did for me. Your Excellency, I would like to also take this opportunity to thank my father's friends, the late M. V. Ojalo and his family. I think today we have Omar Sar um, representing, representing them here. Um, because I see myself as a symbol of friendship. I was born into that friendship, you know, name me one uh, after one of them. And uh, I would also want to really single out Alaji Kaba Jalo, because my father told me how much he has helped him personally. So, Your Excellency, I think I would want to stop here uh, and thank everybody. Thank Your Excellency for the confidence, like I said, given me and the support. I couldn't have performed my duties as Secretary General without your support, Your Excellency, so I want to applaud that. And I'm sure that you are also going to give me the same support um, that I need in this, in this uh, position. So thank you very much. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. الحمد لله رب العالمين امام نيوم لا نيو بو باخ 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 دي لا نوكيل نك لا كونغراتي تي ابوينمنت مان سوما نيوي سي بلاص نا داما دي سيتلو بو ما سيتلو ما جيس نيو نيوبوتي فايس بريزيدنت اي هاريتام اك موكام نيو توغي ني سوما خامي اوت نيوب تام واي جابارام بوم خامي ناكو ما جيسي اوسو بي بي رك خامنا مي كوكو ماي مادام Your Excellency, the Vice President, Mr. Mohamed Jallo, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Secretary General and Head of the Civil Service, Senior Government officials present, invited guests, Imam Ratib of Banyun, members of the media. I welcome you to this vital part of our governance process, as dictated by the constitutional responsibility confer upon me as head of state. Having reflected on the many qualified Gambians for appointment to the second highest office of the state in the country, I deem it fitting 
to appoint His Excellency Mohamed B. S. Diallo as Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia. <clears throat> to his credit, Vice President Diallo has years of relevant experience in the civil service. Over the last decades, his progress in the service of the country landed him within the upper cadre of the administrative structure as permanent secretary at the Ministry of Education, and later at the office of the president, where I appointed him secretary general and head of the civil service. Ladies and gentlemen, during his tenure as secretary general, Mr. Jallo earned my trust and respect based on his performance and comportment. He demonstrated a high degree of professionalism and loyalty to the nation. Hence, his subsequent appointment to represent the Gambia at the Senegal of Gambia Secretariat. While in active service, he also saw exemplary character and left his mark in the institutions he served. I trust his knowledge of governance and public administration it will be an asset to the country, particularly with regard to the supervisory role he will play in overseeing the government institutions under his purview and his participation in cabinet deliberations. Vice President Jallo is assuming office at a time when the pace has been set to pursue our revised national agenda, as prescribed in the Green Fiscal Focal National Development Plan 2023-2027. Your Excellency, distinguished personalities, the recent performance contract signed with state-owned enterprises indicate my government's preparedness to set public service delivery targets. Such accountability tools are signposts for the implementation of our national development plans. And they need to be implemented in collaboration with all ministries, departments, and government agencies. The Gambian citizens have taxed us as a government to deliver on our promise of maintaining peace, security, and development in a transparent and accountable manner. Accordingly, I am deeply committed to leaving an enviable legacy which can only be achieved with the support and cooperation of all arms of government. I am confident that the public servants and the technicians in our midst are the engine for the realization of this aspiration. Nevertheless, the citizens have the responsibility of keeping us on our toes to deliver and positively and meaningfully impact the lives of Gambians. Consequently, the responsibility we shoulder is enormous, but with the sincerity, commitment, and dedication of every one of us, we can transform our dear Gambia in the shortest time possible. I welcome Vice President Jallo to Cabinet and call on him to continue serving the nation with due devotion. I also urge him to maintain and promote the cordial team spirit and high sense of professionalism that bind cabinet members in our collective tasks of developing the Gambia with unquestionable sincerity. On behalf of the entire Gambian population and cabinet members in particular, I congratulate you, Mr. Vice President, on your appointment and wish you good luck and success during your tenure of office. 
In addition, I thank you for accepting to undertake the huge responsibility of executing the functions of the position of Vice President for the noble task of national development. I pray that Allah continues to bless the Gambia. I thank you for your kind attention. Alamina Rahman, 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 والهادي إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله وقدم الدارزين اللهم جل بلادنا قامبيا بلدا آمنا من معينا يا تعالي سقار قدا من كل مكان ونجنا من كل بلا وقلا وتاون وسنا ووبا تعين نذن ذلك بلادنا قاسة بلاد المسلمين عامة بعرمة اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والقاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدر مدى العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين بحرمة لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله ما مرسل يلا دينكنا لريو من قولكي بريسيدن بأقبالهم يغاقم لنشرون بلغي نبتاكو سرات المستقيم Amen. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Albaka. Albaka, important. Yo, not to Yeah, transfer us. Ha, code you. Okay. What's that? ID sort of. Sorry. I got it. Bridge bro. Albaka. Albaka. But Allah sabi so taria. Ha. But no more kija na nungku no mara taria. Ha. Jano miyona forest de biro. Gambia tongko na lumbari ya biro. Ha. Birim ko na for kato. But isi kodo kino kato ni for bolong blabe. 56 branches more so the Gambia ja. Ha? Ka. Gambia kono ani Gambia bankala bankol. Nko kono ki a bere. Hm? Kono si fa si fa fo falindiro fo nyaadi lafta mem men na kodi to poto ni kodi maraw. Jannam number 1 ti nyonta. An num fanan nata anoda enterprise so dale. Wala golam nyin di ko domorol fanan kol fanan be firale de dadi ma ni domorol ni fanan be teat. Ha. Gambia dawda yalo ma kum fa kendol so dale ji. Ha, e wo moy wo diat. Ha. A pelen da. Ni mo ka ni na lafta nyelan kendol e binaji. Yalo buka ni la kol la barka. Ha, yalo ndel chosa no lo. Barka.